Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Joanna Ho. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Three Hong Kongers return home after winning their appeal against life sentences on drug charges. A suspicious fire in Taiwan kills a 15-year-old girl and injures six other people. And over 340,000 people book slots for quarantine free travel to the mainland. Three Hong Kongers who were jailed for life in the Philippines on drug charges returned to Hong Kong this morning after winning their appeal. Lo Wing Fai, Chen Kwok Tong and Kwok Kam Wa were sentenced in December 2018 after being convicted of manufacturing and possessing the drug ice on a boat off Subic Bay in the northern Philippines. They claimed they were framed. They won their appeal in March last year, but were detained until Tuesday. This morning, they were reunited with their families at the airport. Also present was former legislator James To, who helped them throughout the case. Lo's sister said having her brother back home is the best New Year gift. A fourth Hong Kong man, Leung Shu Fok, is still jailed in the Philippines and is continuing his appeal. A 15-year-old girl has been killed in a suspicious fire in her flat in Taiwan. Six other people, including the teenager's mother, were injured and dozens were evacuated, Katrina Lau reports. Residents of a building in Taiwan were asleep when a fire broke out, sending 150 of them fleeing to safety. Thick smoke poured out of a flat on the 26th floor of Mei Wai House in Mei Lam Estate at around 5 a.m. Nine fire engines and five ambulances were rushed to the scene. After dousing the flames in half an hour, firefighters found the body of a 15-year-old girl in the apartment where the blaze began. The teenager's 45-year-old mother suffered burns to her face and hands. The woman's boyfriend was overcome by smoke and was found unconscious in the toilet. Four other residents on the same floor were also injured. All six were taken to Prince of Wales Hospital. A resident said the smoke woke him up and he found his nostrils blackened by ash as he raced down the stairs to safety. Wang Tan of the fire services department said the blaze was suspicious. He said fire accelerants were found at the scene and the flames had spread abnormally fast. Police Assistant District Commander Sharon Wong said there was no record of domestic violence in the affected household. Katrina Lau, HKIBC. Over 340,000 people booked slots to go to the mainland in the first 24 hours after a government online system went into operation. Transport services to cross-border road points will be ramped up from Sunday when quarantine-free travel begins. It's been three years since Lok Ma Chow Station was closed because of the pandemic. But from Sunday, mainland-bound travelers can go to the station to cross the border. They must show proof of a negative PCR test obtained in the 48 hours before departure and check that their permits to enter and leave the mainland are still valid. The first train to Lok Ma Chow on Sunday will leave Mong Kok East Station at 5.28 a.m., while the last train heading to Admiralty will depart from Lok Ma Chow at 10.55 p.m. Frequencies will be increased to 4 to 8 minutes at most times. Cheng Chi Kung, the MTR head of cross-boundary operations, said the railway operator can cope with an expected surge in passenger demand and pledged to make service adjustments when necessary. Also on Sunday, two ferry terminals will resume operations. While long queues were seen at Turbojet's ticket counters at the Hong Kong Macau Ferry Terminal in Sheng Wan, some people tried in vain to buy tickets at the China Ferry Terminal in Qim Sha Chou. Chu Kong Passenger Transport, which provides ferry services to different destinations on the mainland, said people can only buy tickets online. 
However, its website currently only sells tickets to Shekou. City Bus is boosting services from Sunday on its Boundary Express routes B3X and B5 to and from Shenzhen Bayport and the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, Hong Kong Port. KMB is resuming Route B1, which connects Tianshui Wai and Lok Ma Chao. Many who had secured a place to go north were seen at various community testing centers today to obtain a negative PCR test proof. As for crossing the border from the mainland to Hong Kong, an online reservation system opened today and was reported to be functioning smoothly. Officials believe that there wouldn't be many or large-scale parallel trading activities in the initial stage of the border reopening. Deputy Customs Commissioner Chen Si Ted said that's because people will have to book a slot to cross the frontier, but he did not rule out a rise in parallel trading after more restrictions are eased in the later stages of the reopening. Chen clarified that people will be allowed to bring along a small amount of regulated medicines for personal use when they cross the border. But enforcement action will be taken against those carrying a large quantity, such as packing their entire luggage with painkillers, he added. Officers will conduct selective inspection at the border. Chief Executive John Lee is confident that the economy will rebound as most social distancing measures have been scrapped. In an exclusive interview with HKIBC, he also shared an emotional moment with viewers. Chief Executive John Lee has pushed Hong Kong further to normality by scrapping most COVID curbs. In an interview with the Hong Kong International Business Channel, he gave his vote of confidence for a quick economic recovery. Tourism uh, will come back uh, very quickly. And we have new attractions, which are the favorable policies that uh, the uh, country has given us. And these are the INT, Aviation Hub, uh, the Arts and Culture uh, Exchange Hub, and also uh, intellectual property trading. So these are the new beauties. The former policeman has some advice for young people wishing to serve the public. Well, you have to believe in what you do. You have to have the passion for it. The purpose of public service is not to ask for people to compliment you. The purpose of public service is to ensure that you create value for society. While Lee rarely talks about his family, he opened up by thanking his father and also his other half. If there's uh, another person that you would like to thank in front of the TV now, who would that person be? My wife, absolutely, without a doubt. Because, uh, in fact, I uh, could not find the time to, to talk to her, uh, and she she has been so um, supportive and considerate. Overseas, Britain's monarchy is bracing itself for any fallout from Prince Harry's autobiography, which includes sensational revelations about his life as a royal. The book, titled Spare, is due to be released on Monday, but was mistakenly put on sale early in Spain, enabling journalists to come through it. The most astonishing claim is that his elder brother, Prince William, physically attacked him and knocked him down, and said unpleasant things about Harry's wife, Meghan. Harry said, while serving in Afghanistan as a helicopter pilot for British forces, he went on missions that resulted in the death of Taliban fighters. He also wrote that he and William had pleaded with their father, now King Charles, not to marry Camilla, who's become the Queen Consort. All 15 members of the United Nations Security Council have expressed concern over the visit of an extremist Israeli minister to a Jerusalem site considered sacred by Muslims and Jews. Palestinians accused Itamar ben Gwir of provocation when he went to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. What red line does Israel need to cross for the Security Council to finally say enough is enough, and to act accordingly. When? 
are you going to act? It has displayed utter disregard for the sanctity of Palestinian life, the sanctity of international law, and the sanctity of al-Haram al-Sharif. Israeli Representative Gilad Erdan criticized the Security Council for holding an emergency meeting on Ben Gur's visit. He said Muslims can pray at the site, while Christians and Jews can only visit. After 11 ballots over three days, the U.S. House of Representatives still has no speaker. Republican Kevin McCarthy, who wants the job, has been unable to win over a small faction in his party. Kevin McCarthy's ego and his pursuit of the speakership at all costs is drowning out the voices and the needs of the American people. They cannot stop fighting among themselves. They are imperiling our country as they continue their pursuit for this speakership, putting the American people and our democracy in their rearview mirror. McCarthy fell short each time to secure the 218 votes needed, although his party controls the House. That's because 20 heartland Republicans refused to back him. Balloting resumes tonight, which happens to be the second anniversary of the riots at the U.S. Capitol. The last time Congress took so long to choose a speaker was in 1860. The Hang Seng Index rose to a six-month high today before the New Year rally fizzled out and the benchmark ended the session marginally lower. Beijing's promise of more help to the ailing property sector saw Country Garden extend gains for the second straight day, jumping nearly 6 percent today. Standard Chartered shares rose 4.5 percent in Hong Kong. They surged 20 percent in London yesterday on reports that First Abu Dhabi Bank was considering a bid for Stan Chart. But the Arab lender has since changed its mind. Tesla's attempt to revive falling demand by cutting prices for its electric cars affected its rivals. Xpeng Motors lost 6.8 percent and Li Auto 6.5 percent. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed down 60 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent was up $1.60, Alibaba up $2. AIA down $0.90, cents, Ping An up $0.95. Cents. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, euros at 8.19, pounds at 9.25, and Australian dollar at 5.25. Over to the UK market, FTSE 100 is up 20 points. Mainland energy companies have placed orders for Australian coal, signaling a thaw in the frosty relations between Beijing and Canberra. China banned imports of Australian coal two years ago. Power consumption on the mainland has increased after COVID rules were scrapped, allowing the full-scale resumption of industrial activity. Ties between the two nations soured after Australia demanded an international inquiry into the origins of COVID. Relations improved after President Xi Jinping met Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese in Bali in November. On to the weather now. It will be overcast with sunny intervals tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 16 and 22 degrees. A few light rain patches in the next couple of days. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world.
That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Joanna Ho. Thanks for watching. Good night.